Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, this one comes from somebody in the forum who asked about my micro calc project. And I've touched on this before in one of the live shows. I think I explained a little bit about it, but I thought it probably deserves its own little short blog describing the what the micro calc is, the project, and uh, some of the design aspects that went into it, because it's rather interesting. So let's go. And here's the micro calc project. This is what it looks like. It Well, it's not finished, but we'll go into that. What it is, is it's basically the world's first and only credit card size programmable scientific calculator. It's got a dot matrix uh, display on it at 128 by uh, 32 display. It's got touch sensitive uh, keypad, as you can see, with all the um, scientific legends directly on them. But it is fully programmable. It's got function keys up the top. And I called it the micro calc because... Um, I've already done the micro watch, which you've seen in another blog. So it's basically a credit card, thin, uh, scientific, programmable scientific calculator. Why? Well, why not? I, I always wanted, uh, I, I used to use one of those credit card scientific calculators. You could just whack in your pocket, really small, and uh, but you couldn't really get, um, they came in solar power a lot of the time, but you couldn't really get a scientific version of them. There was one, Casio did make one back in the very early 80s, but it was pretty thick. I think it was about five, six millimeters or something like that. So I figured that I could design my own using off-the-shelf parts, and this is the result, the microcalc. Spec-wise, it's based on a microchip uh, 24F series 16-bit microcontroller. It's got 256k of flash, uh, 16k of SRAM, uh, and you know it's quite a powerful little 16-bit uh, uh, micro. It's the same one as used in my um, microwatch project, but it's just got basically increased SRAM and increased flash memory as well. Now, a lot of thought went into what microcontroller to use for this. Should I use Atmel? Should I use microchip and uh, or something else a TIMSP because it's got to be low power everyone thinks oh use the TIMSP well no these are uh, microchip nanowatt um, XLP micros are pretty darn low power so this was one of the most low power micros I can get um, I considered the microchip 32-bit um, series as well I considered um, all sorts of things but lots of reasoning went back into uh, choosing the microchip 16-bit part again. The other big decision which went into the microcontroller was pretty critical because I, I couldn't put buttons on this thing. They're actually touch sensitive, capacitive sense buttons which I'll also go into. Um, now this microchip uh, PIC chip actually had enough, um, it's got the built-in capacitive uh, sensing technology so I could, I didn't need an external chip, I was going to use one of their Atmel uh, touch sensitive chips to actually do that, um, but they were actually quite expensive, increases your parts count, yada yada yada, so to get it built into my microcontroller, that was awesome. So the number of keys on here were limited by size, finger size and stuff like that, but also by the number of channels capacitive sense channels available on the microchip part. Uh, but it had more than enough power to run, say, uh, chess on here, which is a big thing for the uh, micro watch. Uh, some, some, some of the guys out there, the users, actually wrote a chess program. It's the world's only chess playing watch. So I thought, oh, okay, you can play chess on this one too. So that was the microcontroller choice. It's a little bit arbitrary, a little bit of thought went into it, but plenty of power, once again, to take into account not only the dot matrix LCD display on it, but the uh, micro SD card as well. One of the other major design aspects of this product was how do you power it? Now, I originally wanted to solar power it, but I've already done a blog on that, on this particular design, and why that's not actually possible. So I won't go into it again. So I decided to use the standard lithium coin cell batteries because I wanted them to be replaced so I didn't want rechargeable. I hate rechargeable. They're a, uh, they're a pain in the ass. You can get some really thin lithium ion uh, batteries these days, some you know, under one millimeter um, thick. In absolutely incredible. Um, but yeah, I just I just like the thought of using these disposable batteries. And I went through the battery life calculations and these seem quite reasonable. Now, 
the good thing about button cells, okay, if you haven't actually seen them before, I'll go through it, okay? This is a CR2032 as a standard battery, and you've probably seen them before, okay? You've heard about them before. Like a CR2032 is probably the world's most popular uh, battery. But in case you didn't know, there's actually a reasoning behind these numbers. What the first two, so you can get all these different types. There's, a, oh, there's about 20 of them or something, I think. There's heaps. Um, so they come in all these different sizes and styles. And what the numbers mean are the first, the CR is just um, basically coin cell. That's just, I don't know where that comes from, actually. But the first two numbers mean something, and the last two numbers mean something. In this case, the first two numbers are the diameter of the battery in millimeters. So 16 is 16 millimeters diameter. So a, 20, a, a 2032 is 20 millimeters in diameter. Easy. And the second number is actually the thickness of the coin cell, like that, in, uh, in well, uh, you've got to put a decimal point in there, directly in millimeters. So a CR1616 battery is 16 millimeters in diameter and 1.6 millimeters in thickness. It's great, and it's a standard, and you can choose all these different types of batteries. Now, if you give this a moment's thought, you'll notice, aha, 1.6 millimeters is the thickness of a standard FR4 PCB. That's important. You can also get 2 millimeter PCBs. Uh, you can get 3.2 millimeter uh, PCBs as well, and you can probably get 2.5. I've never had to get one, but uh, you can get those as well, different thicknesses of actual FR4 material. Now, the reason that is important is because when you're designing something really thin, ultra thin like this, you want to make it as thin as possible, obviously. Now, as it turns out, the maximum thickness component on my entire design, after a lot of uh, searching and stuff like that, is the LCD. Now, the LCD I'll go into this a bit uh, more detail later, but the LCD is basically uh, two millimeters thick. So what I can do, so that, okay, my entire design can't be less than two millimeters. It's got to be more because it needs a, f a top front panel and a back panel as well. But if you use a CR1620 um, battery, i.e. it's two millimeters thick, it can slide on there like that and be wedged, sandwiched between the top layer and the bottom layer like that. I don't actually have the top board because the project's not actually finished, but as you can see, whoop, nah, it's gone. There we go. All right, here it is. Here's the battery. The ultimate goal is you glue, you sandwich the two together and you can slide in your coin cell like that. The coin cell will just slide in there and be held in place by the, um, by the thickness of the board and just friction. And because the contact is, you can see I've actually got a large size contact like that. I'd have a matching one on the base board as well, but uh, that means it can just slide in there and make good contact. And I've got two batteries just wired in parallel so that you can actually replace one and not lose your contents. Or if there's any flexing of the thing or something like that, you put it in your shirt pocket, your back pocket, and it flexes, then you've got two battery contacts to, um, to make so that one just won't accidentally disconnect. So there you go. You can actually sandwich things. You don't need to buy a coin cell holder. You can just slide it right in. It's brilliant. Now here's the actual front panel uh, PCB. It's got integrated into it the uh, touch switches. I'll show that later on a 3D uh, thing on the PC and it's got the cutout for the LCD like that and the LCD just solders directly into the back and all the parts mount on there, no problems at all. Now this board is actually uh, 0.8 millimeters thick. Now I could have made it um, I could have made it 0.5 millimeters which is probably about as small as you can get boards made without going ultra ultra exotic i.e. from you know you can get 0.5 millimeter um, boards cheap from PCB cart in um, in China and that's what I use for my uh, the front panel on my micro watch project I use a 0.5 millimeter front panel PCB now I'm a big fan of using I've mentioned this before 
PCBs for front panels because not only are they, you can get them machined easily because they're just a PCB, you can get them from the manufacturer, but you can get them silk screened, you can get nice different colors, all sorts of things. So I integrated these really nice um, touch switches into my PCB. So the front panel is not only the front panel with the buttons etched into it and the nice silk screen on top and you can put a logo there and you can cut out windows and do all sorts of things but it's the actual PCB on the bottom as well. Now this entire design will need three PCBs. This one which basically is the entire calculator which mounts everything like that, everything's mounted on there and there will also be another back panel of the same thickness or I could go for 0.5 millimeters if I wanted to really get the thickness down. So we're talking uh, basically a maximum thickness of um, uh, 3.6 millimeters for the entire design because I said the LCD in there is 2 millimeters. I'd use a CR1620 battery to slide in. So it's 2 millimeters plus 0.8 on the bottom plus 0.8 uh, on the top and that's uh, 3.6 millimeters. In theory, I could probably get it down to 3 millimeters. Unbelievable, right? But, um, and if I found that, all oh, the solder joints might be a bit variable on the LCD, then choose a thicker, slightly thicker battery, the CR1625 or something like that. You've got 2.5 millimeters. Anyway, you need three boards. You need the base one, you need the back plate, which will just be a flat back plate. It'll also have the contact on it for the back uh, battery. And the final board will be an inner board which sits in the middle basically. You just route everything out and that acts as sort of like the central core and you route out around all the components. As you can see, there's probably not going to be much room but there'll be a big section here, just a little bit, so it'll be like completely routed out around all my components. So you do that last after you've perfected your design and, um, and you know, it's, it's ready to go. Then you would design your inner PCB core and then you just glue them all together. You use super glue, you use whatever, stick them all together, sandwich them, and you leave a couple of little slots on the outside to slide your batteries in, a slot on the side for your micro SD card to come in and out, and bingo! You've got a beautiful product without using a case at all. It just uses the FR4 PCBs as the case. I love it. Here's a really good close-up of the, of the main uh, PCB and as you can see it's got the uh, LCD mounting points here and here. These are actually mechanical ones. These are all the electrical mounting points, the micro SD card. This down here, in this actual connector interface down here is the ICSP, the in-circuit serial programming uh, system and it's got, it's got a reset button up there but as you can see these are the two uh, contacts for the two batteries which wedge between it. Now as you can see, the LCD is mounted basically um, sort of, you know, on the back. The, the pins are bent back. I'll actually show you this LCD when you get it. This is how you buy it. It's a standard dip uh, version LCD. So it's designed to just plug directly into a PCB. But there's nothing stopping you from bending those pins back on themselves and cutting them flush so that it, you utilize the full uh, two millimeter, you utilize the two millimeter thickness of that LCD. So you might be able to get away with two millimeters if you trim each pin individually, um, or you might have to go to 2.5, as I mentioned. But you just bend the pins back and use the display uh, inverse like that, pretty much. So instead of just um, sticking it in dip wise, because then it's all exposed and it's just uh, it's awful. You stick it in and you just bend the pins back like that. Real easy. This um, LCD, 128 by 32, it's actually a, get this, it's a Dog M <laughs> uh, graphic series from Electronic Assembly. There you go. That's the uh, model number if you want to look it up and have a play with it. It's not a bad LCD at all. It's reasonably priced um, and it's only 2 millimeters thick. I love it. And in case you're wondering what all these wires here are, I've mentioned this before, it was actually a silicon bug inside the PIC. Uh, processor for the ICSP port didn't work, the bastards, unbelievable. Um, but yeah, it's got a nice little uh, reset switch, and if you're wondering what the hole up here is, 
uh, when I when I was uh, designing this, everyone, somebody said, "Oh, it'd be nice if it had like a hole to stick it onto a keyring or something like that." So, yep, not a problem. Just stick the hole in for the keyring, and you can actually see the tracks in here under the black solder mask. See, you can actually you, you can actually see the pattern under there, and I think that really looks quite funky. You have to sort of get it in a certain light. If you get it in a different light, it just looks all black and everything. But I think it's it's a really neat sort of high-tech look for that and this is just a um, this connector here is just temporary for um, in-circuit uh, testing and in-circuit prototyping and and debugging as well but there you go that's the micro calc it's not finished yet because um, I never got around to actually doing the uh, back plate and the inner core board as well um, but it's a really neat little project and it just goes to demonstrate how you can uh, using a few novel techniques and a bit of thought, actually design something this small. Um, a lot of the major manufacturers would be struggling to actually, like a Casio or someone, would struggle to get something this thin in a uh, credit card style thing. I can do it using off-the-shelf parts. Easy. All it needs is a bit of thought, and if you adapt an LCD like that, bend its pins back, or you could even use uh, zebra connectors, you can get ones without the connector, the, those zebra strips to join boards top and bottom. Um, and in case you're wondering how you get the power off the top board onto the bottom board, because you've only got the negative down here, the positive would be on the top board, for example, it would sort of, you know, it would sit like that. So you've got to get power from this board down to this board. There's two ways to do that. I chose the simple solution, which is just to put a pad there which wires up to the top board. So you just have a loose wire and you wire it on and then when you squeeze it together the wire gets squeezed and not a problem. But if you really wanted to be smart about it, but it's a bit risky, you could actually put uh, vias all the way along the, say, the edge of the board or somewhere in the board, top and bottom, and then um, actually join them together, but then you've got to rely on the just the physical pressed contact between the different boards. So that's not really a good approach. So the best approach, I think, the most reliable, is just to wire top to bottom and sandwich it like that. And here we are inside the uh, PCB editor for the actual board which I've just shown you. And it's actually a two layer board, that's all I needed. Uh, two layers top bottom and as I said it's either 0.8 or 0.5 millimeters uh, thick depending on uh, the ultimate thickness and the rigidity and the strength I need in the final design and let's take a look at the individual layers this is the uh, silk screen and as you can see this just has the uh, logo and all the buttons all the buttons you want the uh, silk screen overlay uh, goes as you can see it actually overlays the buttons on the red layer there um, and the red layer actually shows, here it is here, the red layer is the individual buttons. Now these are capacitive uh, touch buttons. They rely on the capacitor or the, they rely on the finger um, when you overlay the button. The finger will actually change the capacitance between the pads and that can be detected by the microcontroller. Now there's a whole art in designing these buttons and there's uh, a whole bunch of app notes on how to get it right. As you can see, there's ground in, in between the individual buttons, and there's a bit of um, a bit of trial and error involved in actually determining what size pads to use for different finger widths and button uh, spacings and things like that. So you often won't get these capacitive buttons right the first time. So one of the uh, rules is the uh, signal traces. Uh, need to avoid uh, grounds and other uh, objects, which is why you wouldn't flood fill these boards with the ground on the bottom. Here's the bottom layer here, and as you can see, I didn't uh, flood fill anything, and, and you try to um, keep the, the signal traces away from other digital signal traces because that will detract from the uh, sensitivity of the button. And uh, and the microcontroller, also you need algorithms to detect, um, to actually discriminate between individual buttons as well. So that, uh, you know, if you put your finger halfway between a button, for example, then well, which button does it choose? So there's a bit of um, trial and error involved in that. Let's take a look at the 3D thing. As you can see, there's the cutout uh, in here as well, and I've got the nice rounded edges and the logo up there. But this is what it looks like in the final design. And as you can see, it looks exactly what we got manufactured. Go figure. And this is the, this is the base of it here, as you can see. And it all looks quite well. It shows the cutout. I love these 3D 
uh, view modes because it can actually show you exactly what you're going to get and you can actually see the um, the traces under there as well you can change the transparency and all sorts of stuff in 3d mode it's got the hole up there but it really looks exactly like the finished product so that's the micro calc the world's first and only credit card sized scientific programmable calculator slash computer with dot matrix LCD it's streets ahead that's of anything that's ever been developed or put on the market before and it was real simple it just had to be to put uh, it just uses a few novel concepts capacitive touch sensors um, touch sense switching uh, novel construction with the sandwich using the front panels as the PCBs and the back panels and the inner core just doing a few things like that uh, you can come up with a, you know a pretty good looking awesome looking product like this incredibly simply and I'm a big fan of using PCBs for front panels like this a lot of my projects do it and I highly recommend you give it some thought next time see ya